Good morning YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how I changed the brakes on my 2012 Porsche 911. It's the 997.2 Carrera convertible. Here are the parts and most of the tools you will need. I buy the rotors, the brake pads and the pad sensors from Pelican Parts and the tools I buy from Amazon. I will put a link in the comments section below. As a reminder, this video is for the Carrera version of the 911. If you have the S, it has different calipers. The jack point is located just behind the wheel and I place a hockey puck on the jack to prevent damage to the underside of the car. To install the new pads you'll have to push the pistons back into the caliper which will push brake fluid into the reservoir. Remember to move the cap to allow it to fill. The reservoir is located under the hood by the firewall on the driver's side of the car. I have an impact wrench, but it's just as easy to take the lug nuts off with a breaker bar. One of the wheel nuts may be a lock nut, which requires a key to remove. This can be found under the hood next to the tire repair kit. I made some inexpensive jack stands to support the car in addition to the hydraulic jack. A special shout out to Car Fanatic for the design. The first thing I do is spray the rotor bolts with WD-40 to give it time to penetrate. We're going to remove the brake sensor cable. This cable can be a little tricky to get out. With the Carrera, you need to remove the caliper to change the pads. However, there are only two bolts holding it on. You'll need a Torx 55 to remove these bolts. There is one at the top of the caliper and one at the bottom.
Okay guys, this is really important. When you pull these bolts out, the caliper will drop and all of the weight will be on the brake line. You want to avoid this. What I did is I rigged a bungee cord, I wrapped it around the steering arm through the suspension and attached it to the top of the caliper as shown here. This will take the weight of the caliper when the bolts are removed. I found the easiest way to remove the caliper from the rotor is to put a screwdriver in on the rotor top as you can see here and just pull it out towards you. When I was pulling the caliper I noticed that the brake line was being stretched so there's a small screw it's a 10 millimeter socket uh, which I loosened, which gave a little bit more flexibility to the brake line hose. If you are changing both the rotors and the brake pads, it's much easier to take the rotors off and then change the brakes. It gives you a lot more room to work with. Even though I sprayed these bolts with WD-40, they were in very tight. So I used an impact wrench with a number three bit to loosen them. The rotors can sometimes be seized onto the wheel hub, but a little tap with a rubber mallet at the 5 o'clock position usually loosens them up. As the pads have worn down, the caliper pistons have pushed the pads out towards the rotor. And what we need to do is to install the new ones, we need to push the pistons back to their original position or the new pads won't fit. To do that, we use a brake pad spreader. I've listed the one I use in the comments below. Make sure that you're checking the brake fluid reservoir when you're pushing the uh, brake pads back as fluid will go into the brake system and will go back up into the reservoir. You don't want it to overflow. I use an old screwdriver to pry the brake pad off. As you can see, the wear sensor is still attached, so if you have to give it a hard tug to get that sensor off, you're gonna replace it anyway, so it doesn't matter if it gets damaged. Um, or you can use a screwdriver to try and pry it out of the uh, brake pad.
The pads used in the Carrera model are not ceramic and therefore generate a lot of brake dust. I like to clean the caliper before I put the new pads in using this product. I'll put a link in the comments below. To avoid squeaky brakes, put grease on the pegs that hold the brake pads and on the brake pads as shown. When you install the new pads, you have to hook it onto the top peg and try and push the brake pad backwards to engage the lower peg. The problem is the spring at the back which pushes against the brake pad is very strong. Not everything goes the way you plan. One nice workaround is to put the bottom peg on the brake pad first and then put a screwdriver in the caliper and pull the spring back which takes the tension off the brake pad so you can then get the top hole of the brake pad into the top peg. I find that a wheel bolt, sometimes called a lug nut, can be used to hold the rotor in place while you're installing the new rotor bolts. The bungee cord can pull the caliper up so that the bolts no longer align with the bolt holes. What I do here is I push the caliper down and then I put a thin metal rod through the caliper into the bolt hole to make sure that the bolts can be aligned and then I insert the bottom bolt and tighten the bottom bolt into place. You can then remove the metal rod and put the top bolt in. Don't forget to re-tighten the small 10mm bolt.
finally torque the bolts to 84 newton meters which is 62 foot pounds Installing the new brake sensors can be a little tricky. Push them through the slot in the back of the caliper and into the notch in the brake pad. The large flat side should face towards the rotor. The sensor cable goes through the groove in the caliper, is held in place by the bleed nipple cover and push fits into the connector. I usually give the rotor and caliper a squirt with the cleaning fluid just to remove any grease that may have accidentally got onto those parts. Finally, mount the wheel and install the wheel bolts by hand to avoid cross-threading. Torque them up to 129 Newton meters, which is 95 foot-pounds. <laughs> 